a forest, silent and mysterious. One that guards its treasures well. Rare birds overhead, high up between dense treetops. A region closely linked with legends and myths, tales and truths. But more than anything else, it is a refuge for many animals. The Hearts, a natural jewel covering some 770 square miles. What exactly makes this area so special, to which the rare lynx has also returned? in mist and darkness. This is how Germany's northernmost mountain range often presents itself. A rough wilderness, windswept by violent gale force storms. Shaped by cold winters, and Arctic temperatures. Food becomes scarce for many animals. In the hearts, deer must be especially attentive. A rare hunter is on their trail. Roe deer are the main course on the diet plan of the lynx. They are not in safety until they reach the open field. And he loses out. A lynx never chases its prey, it stalks it. Out in the open, there is no chance. Nowhere else in Germany are there as many lynx. Currently, around 90 of them are living here timid loners that we seldom notice. Winter holds the hearts in a tight grip. Trees, bent with their snow loads, remind one of tussled mountain spirits. To hike here is to enter an enchanted kingdom. The Harz is famous for its surprising weather changes. In the high altitudes, spruces are completely iced over. From up here, the world appears to be miniature. At 3,600 feet, the summit of the Brocken is often host to the winter until April. The higher altitudes are densely forested, and 2,700 square feet of them are protected by one of Germany's largest forest national parks.
for weeks, temperatures rarely climb above freezing point. But eventually, the power of the sun can no longer be curbed and the mountains release their water loads. Slowly, winter lifts off its white blanket. Beneath the last snow, a fox senses mice, led by his fine hearing capabilities. His mice leap draws the attention of a roebuck. He doesn't want a fox on his territory. Now, even at altitudes above 2,300 feet, the snow blanket begins to reveal gaps. Small meltwater pools are created. Grass frogs are on their way to their spawning pools. The robust amphibians have even made it to the summit. It's time for those still without a female partner to do something about it. They have to cling on to someone No matter what. The dark males are real powerhouses with strong arms and tight calves. Frog wrestling. Here, everything's allowed. Levering. Strangling, obviously. The odd kick here and there. Grass frogs are quick off the mark. In two to three days, their eggs are fertilized and the show is over. Spring has finally made it to the hearts. The courtship choruses of robins and nuthatches ring throughout the forest. And a kind of barking. This sound has him listening intently. A young lynx, just three years old, roams about his territory, which in the Harz region can be anything up to 135 square miles. Characteristic calls magically attract him. Lynx are actually loners, but at the end of March, the mating season, the male searches for a partner and therefore follows the distant call. But something is unusual about this rendezvous.
The female lynx rubs herself against a tree. Her scent informs the male of her readiness to mate. But all of her amorous efforts are thwarted by a fence, as she lives in an enclosure. In a similar place, not far from here, the return of the lynx to the hearts has begun. The cat was wiped out throughout Germany. From 2000 to 2006, 24 lynx from wild parks were initially familiarized with the new environment and then released into the hearts. And now he wishes to reproduce. The female lynx is only in mating mood for a few days, but she cannot leave her enclosure. She is infertile and is no longer able to hunt. In the forest, she wouldn't stand a chance. The male is tasting the air. A special organ in his oral cavity enables him to perceive a female scent more intensively than with his nose. Both may like one another's smell, but don't seem to fit. He will have to look for another partner. His chances are pretty good. In the meantime, more than 50 fertile lynxes are currently roaming the hearts. At the beginning of April, the last brown of the winter gives way to the green of spring. Initially in the lower elevations and at the edge of the mountains. The distinctive scent of wild garlic wafts around the still young beech leaves. In the lower hearts, offspring is on its way. Ten days before birth, mouflon mothers isolate themselves from the pack. As soon as the lambs are four days old, they return together. At the end of April, the little ones are already four weeks old. Mouflons arrived in the hearts around a hundred years ago. The wild sheep originally came from Sardinia and Corsica and were settled there explicitly for hunting purposes. Around 600 of them now live in the eastern hearts. The youngsters are all gathered in the pack. Time to play. The older animals are stimulated by the exuberance of the little ones. Headbats and trials of strength swiftly determine the ranking. 
movement makes you hungry. The lambs are suckled for around five months. The pack moves on. A small mouflon has missed his connection. A lynx, his only enemy here, is close by. Perhaps he failed to notice the little lamb. Or perhaps he is no longer hungry. The lynxes are doing well in the hearts. All territories are occupied. Some of the big cats are already beginning to leave the mountains. On their way to new forests, they have to cross fields and meadows, as well as villages and roads. This lynx is resting in a hedgerow, surrounded by fields. Unnoticed and apparently unimpressed by the noise of a tractor. Although we rarely catch a glimpse of the big cats, they sometimes use territories in the immediate vicinity of humans. The lynx wouldn't stay in areas like this, but he can and must cross this border on his way to new territories. But just what keeps him here and in the daytime? This crow has known why for some time. The lynx has hidden his prey close by. Roe deer are plentiful between the fields. But the prey shouldn't be so easy to find, especially with crows and magpies in the area. In true lynx manner, he eats the deer from behind. The annoying scroungers wait for their chance. As long as his prey lasts, he will keep hidden close by, then move on. This lynx will sometime, perhaps, far from here, establish a new territory. Rising fog. Mysterious natural phenomena have always inspired the people of the bewitched mountains. It's the 30th of April. <laughs> All witches are supposed to gather on this day on the summit of the Brocken. Ancient belief made famous by Goethe's Faust. <laughs> there are many myths and relics of bygone days. Falkenstein Castle, 900 years old and never conquered. It rests on a rocky ridge, high above the Selke Valley. The Selke is one of the most beautiful rivers of the region, though anything but the only one. Orca, Innister, 
of the border. Dozens spring from here and have created inaccessible valleys. The white-throated dipper feels good here. Raging floods are its territory. The imminent fledglings are very hungry. Dippers are the only songbirds that can both swim and dive. In the currents, the parents search for insect larvae, crustaceans or snails. To be able to raise their four to six chicks, both birds fly to the nest more than 3,000 times every day. The parents also dispose of the feces of their offspring, which are practically encased in a fine membrane and biodegradable. After just three weeks, the young dippers leave the nest. Still a little clumsy, they wait at the river for food. The parents are nervous. A grey heron lurks downstream. He doesn't miss a movement. The big bird is on the hunt. A young dipper would make a welcome meal for the heron. The parents fish one caddisfly larvae after another out of the river. They haven't always got the hunter in their sights. But the heron is after something more substantial, a trout. Fortunately for the little dipper. Now, from the picturesque valley, back to the high altitudes. Storms have uprooted several trees. Bark beetles transform once green forests into dead wood. In some cases, entire slopes. Not a very nice sight, but a natural process. In the Harz National Park, the forest is left to its own devices. The old make room for new life. Tiny spruce trees take root on those that have fallen. Dead trees don't spell the end. They are the dawn of a new forest that will provide protection and food for many. The lynx, for example. His eyes and ears are quite rightly proverbial. He never misses even the smallest movement. Wherever you find red deer, he is not far away. Small clearings 
offer does and their offspring good hiding places as well as food. The cat has killed a deer calf nearby and in true lynx manner has covered it with plants. Apart from food, there are also countless nesting possibilities in the amply structured forest. But there is unrest in the bird paradise. The reason for the excitement is a small owl. When she leaves her home, everyone sounds the alarm. Pygmy owls hunt down birds, even by day. The little owls have offspring to take care of. While one of the owls has captured a great tit, the partner is waiting with a mouse in its grip. The mouse gets stuck at the entrance, a sign for the woodpecker to attack. When the owls are no longer visible, the great spotted woodpeckers in the neighborhood calm down. Forests left to their own devices. Bark beetles and windfall create room for new and diverse life. The spruce forests present a completely different picture. Even in this monoculture, there are those that still find enough food. Wood ants. Their impressive nests are almost six feet high. Dozens of heaps with a myriad of animals. What do these insects feed on? Only very rarely can one see how they carry their loot to their nest. And this requires much energy from the industrious creatures. Their secret can be found on the upper floors of the forest, 65 feet up, in the spruce treetops. Bark lice. When an ant touches a louse with its feeders, it secretes nutritious honeydew, just small droplets, but within an hour, each louse is capable of dispensing a quantity corresponding to its body weight. Then it's back to the anthill with a bulging abdomen. An empire kept alive thanks to the inconspicuous bark lice up in the treetops. The dense, deciduous and coniferous forests, the remote valleys with their rocks and steep cliffs, are retreats for animals that live hidden from sight. One of the greatest treasures is the lynx. Considered extinct for 200 years, the lynx is born here regularly again occupying almost all possible territories.
Here in Lynx country, three months ago, the mother gave birth to two cubs. She's on the hunt. A good reason to follow her. The pigeon is the right size. But one needs experience to catch a bird. And a generous portion of luck. Playfully, the brother rehearses the killing bite. They learn everything that a lynx has to know from their mother. She especially trains them from the hunt, to lurk, to stalk, and to strike. Mankind's intensive persecution of the lynx throughout Central Europe 200 years ago led to their extermination. Now, they are back. The success story of the lynx is closely linked to the protection measures of this place. Once, the East German War traversed today's national park. The entire area was a no-go zone for many years. And in several places, nature remained mostly untouched. Dry summer weather never lasts long in the hearts. Westerly winds carry damp air masses that rain down on the mountains. There is about three times as much precipitation in the hearts than in the surrounding area. If it rains cats and dogs, as it were, all of the lakes and dams are soon full to the brim. The water searches for new ways through the forest. The streams reach their limits. The enormous water masses from the mountains pour into the foreland. The result is flooding. In the record year of 2017, up to 80 gallons of rain fell in just 48 hours. The low mountain range is already a valuable water source. In normal years, billions of cubic gallons are deposited on its surroundings. The hearts conceals many natural treasures. Some lie underground, deep in the rock of the mountains. Cavities, eluted from a mighty limestone massif. The Eberg Stalactite Cave, a formal coral reef created some 400 million years ago. Fossilized snails, wrinkled corals, and the spirally formed homes of goniotites, 
Extinct relatives of today's squids prove this. These rocks were forced into a vertical position as the region rose more than 100 million years ago. Extremely hard quartz sandstone that weathers very slowly. The Devil's Wall on the northeastern Hearts boundary, more than 12 miles long. God and the Devil argued about who now owns the Earth. The devil would receive the hearts if he could complete a border wall before the first cock crow. As just one stone was missing, the cock crowed, and the devil furiously destroyed his work. From afar, piercingly shrill calls echo across the countryside. They belong to unusual birds that usually breed in towns. However, in the Harz region, they are drawn to the bright open forests with their steep slopes and ancient oaks. Swifts. They only come to the Harz to nest. The elegant birds spend the rest of the year in the air. The fact that they can live here at all is due to the woodpeckers. Almost annually, they create a new hollow for their offspring. The tree tries to close the opening, but the woodpeckers keep the hole open as they occasionally sleep here. This is how the short entrance tunnel is created, as an ideal runway. Common swifts that breed in hollow trunks can only be found in a handful of places in Germany. Here, there are roughly 50 pairs. They hunt for insects above the forests. Life in the air, that's what swifts are made for, but perhaps not for landing in small tree hollows. Their feet are too small to hold on tight. The birds slow down by flapping their wings. The swifts only stay for three months. Then they recuperate to make ready for the flight to Africa and fill the air one last time with their typical calls. Their offspring, with the brighter head coloring, will soon follow their parents. The mighty Sachsenstein, or Saxon stone, lies in the southern hearts. It's a part of a karst landscape that extends 62 miles along the edge of the region. In the nearby Kufhäuser Mountains, rainwater has washed out the interior. This is how the Barbarossa Cave was created. Bizarre flaps of plaster hang from the ceiling. The cave owes its name to Emperor Friedrich I. Also known as Barbarossa, due to his red beard. In the underground castle, he is said to sleep an enchanted sleep whilst awaiting his return.
he is immortalized in bronze in front of the Imperial Palace in Goslar. The old emperor is supposed to wake up every 100 years. And should ravens still encircle the mountain, he has to sleep for a further century, deep down in the cave. It looks like Barbarossa is going to have to wait for a long time. As ravens are numerous in the hearts, they benefit from the abundance of game in the forests, in addition to the leftovers from lynx feasts. The end of September. Rutting season. Red deer on the lookout for the opposite sex. The traditional mating areas are usually small clearings hidden deep in the forest with plenty of food on offer for the deer cows. His calls are echoed. Call jewels, in which even young deer participate. In a fight, the younger one wouldn't stand a chance. The old deer tries to keep hold of his pack at the rutting area. And pulls out all the stops to impress the ladies. He then marks the wallow with his urine and rolls around in it. This proves irresistible for the deer cows and is a clear signal addressed to the competition to back off. One solitary creature ignores the powerhouse male and celebrates his success at the edge of the clearing. Mid-October, for a short period, the deciduous forests display their most colorful side. Not long afterwards, the weather turns chilly. For the mouflons, it's now mating season. The rams have joined the groups of females. Disputes are the order of the day. A salt stone hidden by hunters in a tree stump attracts the animals. The best place, close to the mineral source, is hotly contested. These two present themselves as large as possible a proven strategy designed to intimidate rivals. The sheep are now constantly pestered by the rams. They regularly monitor the urine of the females. These are only fertile for three days, so timing is of the essence. The rams will mate with the females until the beginning of December.
They have to be constantly aware of the lynx. The big cat is an effective hunter, whether on the cliffs of the deeply indented valleys or in the spruce forests of the higher altitudes. This female has killed a red deer calf and wants to secure her prey. The cat is nervous. Something is bothering her. The carcass lies just a few feet away from a hiking trail. Nonetheless, it remains undiscovered, just like the lynx female. People keep coming and going, but adhere to the pathways. When no humans are in sight, the lynx tries to hide her prey. This also protects it from hungry crows and raven. The deer calf is heavy. She can't move very far through the uneven terrain and remain undiscovered. The lynx probably won't be able to eat in peace until night falls. Lynx need space. This is not endless even in the hearts. In the foreland, the forests give way to a mosaic of fields and meadows. Here, another smaller species of cat resides, a rarity in Germany, the European wildcat. She is on the hunt for her main prey, which she hunts mostly by ear. From a distance, she is often dismissed as a domestic cat. Close up, however, she reveals herself due to the blurred fur markings and her seemingly plump body. A further distinguishing feature of the timid mice catcher is the bushy tail with the dark rings and its blunt ending. Hunt and habitats loss have virtually wiped out many of Germany's wildcats. Their stocks in the hearts remain stable with more than 500 animals. Their hunting success doesn't go unnoticed. Buzzards and grey herons are also after mice in wildcat territory. The heron is a master stalker, but contrary to the cat, he has to be able to see the prey. A fat water vole. The buzzard would love that. But he is much too late. If she finds enough mice, she will get through the coming winter well. A wildcat can eat between 15 and 20 daily.
initial light snowfall adequately announces the approaching winter. For many months, the hearts will soon once again disappear beneath a dense blanket of snow. Whatever wildcats, lynx, and many other wild animals need to live, they can find it here. In the legendary mountain wilderness, located in the heart of Germany. Thank you.